Hello and welcome to Wildcraft Dying. My name is Zoe McDonald and on this week's episode we are dying cedar bark. Come join me. This week's episode is dedicated to the Musqueam First Nation on whose land I live and whose artists and people have been using cedar bark and cedar for, well, since the beginning of time. So first things first, this video is specifically on how to dye cedar bark, not how to harvest it, process it, or anything else. Um, I do dyeing of cedar bark for a number of local indigenous artists who use them then for different purposes. This cedar is specifically going to be used in a class, uh, so that's what I'm going to be showing you today. At the end, I'm going to cover natural dyes and what those are like with cedar, but for this video, I'm going to be using modern or an acid dye called RET. Now, whenever you're dyeing, it's by weight, it's not by volume. Um, and as if you read the instructions on the RIT bottle, it says uh, use half a bottle of RIT per pound of fiber. Now, cedar bark does not take color as well as, let's say, a white cotton t-shirt. So I ended up doubling it. You want to double it. So for every pound of cedar, you are dry cedar that you are going to be dyeing, you want to use the entire bottle of RIT. Now, whenever you're dying with cedar, three things to keep in mind. You always want to soak it for at least an hour in warm water to loosen it. And the other thing is you want to take off if there's ties, like you can see here, you want to take the ties off as it, as it softens up. And the other thing is that you want to make sure your cedar is split down before you die. If your cedar is thick and you die and then you split it afterwards, you're going to get a side that doesn't have color. Now you can use that um, if you are doing an article that's say twisted, like making a rose, uh, you can use that sort of to get two different colors. But just something to keep in mind is you usually want to have it the same thickness that you will be using in your art. Now here, um, as you can see, I'm just leaving it to soak and I left it to sort of soak in warm water for one hour. And it happens to be this is one pound of cedar. Now you can pretty much just follow the instructions, which is a teaspoon of dish soap and then for any plant dyeing, which is cotton, linen, or cedar, you're going to add that cup of salt. So I added the cup of salt, and then here I used half a bottle, and I ended up adding the rest of the bottle. Oh, and I just felt like it wasn't taking enough of that dye in, which is pretty common for red cedar. Red cedar tends to resist a lot of color. Um, there's, there's an exception, and I'll cover that at the end. Um, but here we go. I've added in the bottle. I've added in, and as you can see, the ties have come off um, because I really want that cedar to be loose, be um, as exposed to as much of the dye in the in there as a possible. Um, and I also tend to weight things down with a pot, with a pot lid, as you can see. Now, be aware that that pot lid can sometimes take on the color that's in the pot, um, in the dye pot. So the, co the pot itself go a little bit red. But um, as you can see, I'm really starting to get, it's come out this like really lovely cherry red. Um, and I end up uh, it says you can leave it in for 30 to 60 minutes. I ended up leaving it overnight. Again, cedar bark can use a little bit of encouragement to really absorb that color um, much more than, let's say, a t-shirt. So that's one thing to keep in mind is if you can, just to leave it overnight. Um, and the other thing, too, is I like to keep the, the ties undyed. And the reason is I think that it really shows what the cedar looked like originally versus what it looks like when it's dyed. So I soak uh, those ties. I'm getting ready to pull those bundles out and then tie them back up. And then the bundles tied should make a really nice contrast. So at this stage, um, I have left it overnight. I'm going to end up tipping it and pouring out as much right down the sink as I possibly can. To do that, I'm going to remove the cedar. As you can see, it's gone an even darker shade of red. And I'm going to take it out as much as I can, and then I'll end up tipping it out um, and then just giving them really, really good rinse. I'm rinsing it over and over again, really until that water is basically clear because whoever's going to use that, this is this cedar is going to be used in a, to teach a class. Um, I don't want their hands getting all red or I don't want that if the, you know, if they're making a basket, the basket gets wet. I don't want that red to seep in and sort of destroy the, the pictures of the images or the, the stripes or whatever the basket's going to look for. So really make sure that you're giving this a really, really good soak. So here we are. We're going to pour it out. 
and then you're just going to see me um, put the cedar back in and then just rinse it repeatedly until I really feel like I've gotten as much of that loose color out as possible. So a couple more things. You want to be a little bit cautious of the writ and the dye and try and make sure that if there's spots on the counter as you can see i've got a couple spots there on the right um that you're just washing those continuously and making sure that the dye doesn't stay because this is a really powerful dye it really easily stains stuff and you'll also want to use gloves so that your hands don't go bright red so just you know just being respectful of how strong a dye this can this can be um and then hopefully it you know it's going to make it a really nice long lasting color on your materials um, and at this stage, I have rinsed it numerous times. Um, the water is coming in nice and pretty much clear. There's a little bit of pink, but it's not too bad. Um, and now I'm going to just tie those bundles back up. Um, so just taking one at a time um, and then tying them back up the way that, that she uh, passed them to me so that I can pass them back to her in the same way. And that's just how I tie up my bundles. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this aspect of the modern dyes and then of course now we're just going to let it uh, dry in that shape where it's going to go stiff again um, and then she'll just let it soak again to move forward with her class. Now this is just personal preference but when I am making a bundle I like to start with the thickest part of the strip um, because at the end of it, um, it can be fine enough that you can use that as a tie itself. Sometimes, you know, ties go missing. You might not have quite as many as you did originally. Part of one of those sort of mysterious mysteries of the universe type things. Um, but you'll see on a couple of these, um, I didn't have, I think I, or I realized that it, it itself could be a tie. So then I just use that to tie itself off. Now, I'm not entirely sure of the right way to phrase this, but if I've been approached to to trade to work with an artist to collaborate with a first nations artist um and i'm providing material i want to make sure that and i want to pass this on to anybody else who is interested in this kind of work to make sure that you are approaching this project a project like in this instance dying but whatever it is with sort of positive energy if you're feeling really kind of down and negative and frustrated and exhausted that's not a great time to to try and tackle a project like this you really want to make sure that you're trying to kind of inject positive energy um and then that's that's what i was doing and i i realize i run this art this channel as a as a scientist but um i can also try and be very respectful of people's views too bundles are still wet but they're nicely tied off and reorganized again um, I am going to gather this up and take it back over to my friend's place um, I'm really glad with how it came out I think using writ gives you a lot of options in terms of colors you can use um, I've seen some beautiful turquoise and blue and yellow and um, black as well so there's lots of options though of course this is a more modern take Here you are, Shauna. Thanks so much for this opportunity, and I hope you and the class have a wonderful time working with cedar. Let's touch on natural dyeing with cedar. I'm not going to go into it too, too much because I want to make its own video, but I've been doing this for a couple of years, and here are some of the things that I have learned just to kind of give you an overview of some of the natural dyes you can use. If you're looking for silvers or gray, you can use something called ferrous sulfate, which you can either order as a powder to dissolve, or you could use rusty nails or other rusty parts. I mean, that will give you a uh, silver into dark gray, really almost into the blacks. It's a very, very dark gray um, with heat. If you want to add a little bit of logwood, this is uh, the heart of the logwood tree. It's a South American dye. You could really push it into a true black. So I would do the iron or the iron with logwood is going to give you the grays and the blacks, um, which is obviously kind of a classic color for a lot of different cedar bark projects. Um, if you're interested in red, uh, cochineal, which is uh, South American and South Eastern United States. Um, you can use either the extract as we have here or you can grind it down. Um, you have to use quite a high percentage in order for the cedar to take it. And unlike wool, do not add 
um, cream of tartar. That's one thing I learned. If you add cream of tartar to try and get more of a red, you're going to get it into the browns. And I'll show you that in a second. So here it is. This is the brown you get. So don't <laughs> don't do it. It's a waste of cedar. Uh, just do alum and cochineal. Um, here is Osage. This is a yellow dye. Um, a few things give you some nice yellows. I found that onion skin hasn't done very much, but uh, Osage and Weld is another uh, plant you can grow in your garden that gives you yellows um, that work really well on cedar. So that's something to think about as well, whether you want to grow your own to give you a uh, yellow but again, I found that onion skins didn't do a huge amount. Um, and obviously there's more uh, native plants that can do it. I've heard the dull Oregon grape roots uh, inside. Um, when it comes to purple, you can actually use logwood on its own um, with a pre-mordant of alum. And that can give you um, a little bit of that purple, as you can see here in this picture. I haven't done a ton of purple dyeing with cedar, but I can see that it did take the uh, logwood. So you can try experimenting with that to get it, uh, get it going. And then lastly, I want to talk about blues. You can use indigo to get blue but only on yellow cedar. Yellow cedar, for whatever reason, that inner bark will take and go very nicely. These, um, this is from 20 minutes in, 20 minutes out. Um, but again, it's red cedar does not seem to take indigo to the same amount. So that's it. That's kind of a broad overview of dying with cedar. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please like and subscribe for more videos on dying.